Yet, in honor of the Cowboys going back to camp, I open today's show by reading the opening passage from the first of my three Dallas Cowboy books that I wrote. In my view, the best of the three. It's called God's Coach, if you're not familiar. It's about the rise and the fall of Tom Landry's cowboy empire, which in many ways was closer to the Roman empire. God's coach begins and ends with Gerald Wayne Jones Jr., Jerry Jones, who just might be the most amazing man I ever met. No exaggeration. So please for a moment sit back and so to speak, drink in the impossibly amazing way in which this quote-unquote hick from the, the Arkansas sticks, this Jethro Jones, somehow managed to acquire what would become the most valuable team in all the world, America's team. I now hold in my hands for those who are watching a real live hardcore, uh, excuse me, a real live hardcover copy of God's Coach, my first Cowboys book. And I'm about to read the opening words that I sat at my keyboard and wrote. The day before, Jones and Son had been at an oil and gas convention in San Diego. Jerry Jones had done in the oil fields what he did on the football field, overachieve. As a 200-pound guard, he had co-captained Arkansas's undefeated national championship team of 1964. He had married a former Miss Arkansas USA. Then, hustling, plunging, Jones kept striking it richer than Jet and Clampett. Only in America, or Arkansas, Jones was worth, what, $300 million? He didn't know for sure. But now, in early September 1988, Jones was getting bored with gushers. Stephen had done him proud by playing football at Arkansas and graduating with honors, an engineering degree. Daughter Charlotte had graduated from Stanford with a biology degree and had done some modeling. Jerry Jr. had left home to attend Georgetown. So now Jones was restless for a second career, a new challenge, something fun. He had tired of the, the convention and he decided to fly on down the Baja Peninsula in, of course, his Lear 35 with full-time pilot and co-pilot to do some deep sea fishing. That fired him back up. I love to smile, Jerry Jones told me. But now, the morning after, Jones was not smiling. He was wasting away in Margaritaville. Stephen went on fishing, and Jerry Jones threw one eye, past the time scanning a day-old San Diego sports section that he had tucked into his suitcase. His hangover, miraculously, was cured by an item buried on page five. It said, Dallas Cowboys owner H.R. Bumbright has retained Salomon Brothers, an investment banker, to find a buyer for the team. Jones was up, throwing on some clothes. Damn, the Dallas Cowboys, he thought. Soon he was downstairs in the lobby asking the amigo at the front desk, how you call Dallas, Texas, USA? Jones was led to a room with a single telephone. The international operator told Jones she'd call him back when she reached Salomon Brothers. Jones paced. The phone rang. The connection was terrible. Jones fairly yelled into the mouthpiece, You don't know me, but my name is Jerry Jones, and I'm going to buy the Dallas Cowboys. I hope you enjoyed that video. You ready for more? Make sure you click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from The Skip Bayless Show. And don't forget to check out the full episode of the show wherever you get your podcasts by clicking the link in the description.